Tom, I see your hand is up. All right, uh, not opposed to the motion. Hand went up before you called that. Yes, um, yes, sir. Just my own notification, uh, that, that point that Michael brought up. So a motion passes when a majority of present members vote in the affirmative. So in effect, a uh, abstention would be acting as a negative vote in that it would reduce the number that would get to the majority. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, and I think there's another way um, that you can, you know, if you weren't there, obviously it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to vote on the minutes, but I think there is another way besides abstaining, um, but I'm not clear on what that is. I, I have no idea what that is, but I know that we're being watched closely and I want to make sure that um, uh, that that everything is done appropriately and and um, with uh, utter transparency. So I would not vote for the minutes um, if I was not present at the meeting. And I think abstention is my only other option. Yeah, um, I have been at other meetings where there is another option, but I can't remember what it is. So um, I, I have I have not, Michael. I'm sorry. Yeah. So. That's yeah. that's the end of my comment. So is this is this material for us now in our in our voting? Alan, uh, please uh, chime in. I was just going to say the other option would be to walk out of the meeting for a few minutes, which I think some people sometimes do. Or just can people just say they're not voting because they weren't there? Yeah, but it still has the same effect that you brought up uh, that when someone affirmatively votes that they're abstaining. If they're not voting yes, then that's one more person you don't have to meet the requirement you need for the uh, related to the quorum. OK. Yeah, because we could run into the situation where enough people leave that we lose quorum. That's correct. Right. OK, well, we have a number of hands up here. Uh, well, let's uh, move Ray, on. let me let me go to yeah. Ray and then Linda. Can we finish this motion and then discuss parliamentarian stuff first? Well, actually, this relates to whether or not how this yeah. is going to work. So yeah, it, yeah, it's, I it's think we need to order, keep discussing this. This will be a point of order that uh, uh, actually it'll be for the next motion. This this because, is still the October 11th motion. Yeah, this was friendly amended to be. I don't believe so. No, <clears throat> if there's no abstention, then no, I'll wait. OK, Linda, do you want to chime in or do you want to wait for the abstent, abstention motion, the abstended motion? Um, I would like to chime in that uh, Robert's Rules, and I'm taking it off the Robert's Rules website. Um, according to Robert's Rules, abstention votes don't count as a yay or nay, it says. I think okay. I put it in the chat already. Good. Thank you, Linda. Let's move on. Okay, let's move forward with the vote that has uh, apparently has no abstentions. Are there any opposed to the motion that is still on the table? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. That are, that are the meeting minutes, the first set of meeting minutes. So now we need a new motion for the second set of meeting minutes. A motion to approve the October 31st, 2022 meeting minutes as drafted. Second. My Second team keeps Siobhan. crashing. Sorry, Jerry. No, that that yeah, I see that you're uh, you're frozen there, Linda. Yeah, my team okay. keeps crashing on me. I yeah. put it in the chat for everybody to know what abstention is by Robert's rules. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion. We have a second. Are there any opposed? Uh, I see uh, Linda's hand is up. Is anybody else's hand up? Linda might be frozen with her hand up there. Yeah. No. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there so any that opposed? Was... Go ahead, oh, Jeremy. I'm, no. I'm sorry. I was getting ahead motion. of you. Motion on the table, been seconded. Is there anyone opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Yes, Cabot abstains. Denise Moretown abstains. Tom? I think I'm waiting for one He's more abstention. Clear. Thank you. 
We have three abstentions. Did you get those, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, so R.D., Chuck, and Tom Fisher abstaining. Any other abstentions? Lose our time. All right, so the, the, the majority is that the meeting minutes passed. Thank you. Okay, we got there. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to and still technically unanimous. Yes, that is correct. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let, let's let's move on to supply chain. Uh, excuse me, inventory management contract. Uh, who's who's going to bring forward that motion, please? I think I can't uh, bring forward most you know, I, I put in um, a draft motion the group. The chat. Where where is the draft motion, Janelle? It's in the chat. Oh. Here, I'll put it in the chat. <clears throat> I'm not seeing it yet. Okay. Oh, yep. So, whereas a lease for warehouse and box yard in Montpelier for storage and kitting of its materials was entered into by CB Fiber on July 27, 2022, whereas materials have been ordered and have been arriving at our warehouse and box yard since August of 2022. Whereas Wild Blue Yonder has been reliably performing warehouse and inventory management services for CV Fiber on a monthly basis since materials began arriving in August. Whereas ongoing and reliable warehouse and inventory management personnel is required for the materials as they are received and as they are kitted out for construction in the field. Whereas the monthly service fee is uh, $21,491.50 and therefore the annual management fee exceeds $250,000. Approval by the governing board is necessary. It is hereby moved that the contract for warehouse and inventory management services be entered into with Wild Blue Yonder with a one-year term and effective and an effective date of November 2022. Second. Second. Second Second by hold on, hold on. Somebody, somebody yeah. has to make the motion. Yeah, oh, Jeremy, Jeremy, just Jeremy, did. Jeremy just did. It says it is hereby moved. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy made the motion. Okay. And and Siobhan seconded it. Are there is there a additional discussion that needs to be had? Are there any it opposed? Is, oh, go ahead, Siobhan. I was just gonna say it is hereby moved is my trigger phrase to know. <laughs> that, that's what I listen for there. <laughs> okay. Well, you did you did well this time. Is there any additional discussion? Are there any opposed to the motion? Are, are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janiel. Um, Thank you. Nice, nice set of whereas is there moving through the logic of all of that. Thank you. Much appreciated. So we have another another contract to discuss here. Uh, our supply chain services contract that was just uh, approved for recommendation to the board in the prior meeting by the uh, executive committee. And there is a, uh, uh, a motion for that. Ray, would you bring that forward, please? Actually, uh, no action is required on this. What I would say to you is this, that um, we issued a request for proposals for materials warehouse and supply chain services on 3 May. On 14 jo June, the board approved the award of a warehouse and supply chain services contract to KG Pico. Subject mm -hmm. to successful negotiations with the contractor, each is determined by the executive committee and on 9 November of this date, the executive committee approved the contract with KGP Co for supply chain services. 
Very good. So there's no need for a motion here. This is just a notification and update to the governing right. board. Is that correct? Right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. That clarified that for me. We still have another contract, though. We have a construction, a construction contract. This is our uh, second, if if successful, this would be our second con construction contract. Uh, and I just want to remind folks that our intention has always been, our stated intention and our operational intention has always been to have multiple construction contractors. Uh, we have a lot of work to get done and a relatively short amount of time to do it. And it's always been part of our philosophy that we look to have multiple contractors, even though the work may be similar. Uh, we like the competition and we like the option of being able to go with superior service if we find it. Uh, so that is part of our philosophy that we're we've used in the past and we're continuing to use now. And uh, if there is a motion out there for the construction contract, perhaps now would be a good time to bring it to the floor. Okay, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, what I would add to your um, context is that you may recall that we did this for poll inventories. We had multiple poll inventory contracts. We did that for several reasons, one of which was to um, accelerate the work, which is one of the reasons for the construction contract. The other is that uh, you may find that um, with multiple contractors, one or more may not be able, or one, only one or more might be capable of doing the work the way you want it to be done. And uh, among the poll inventory contractors, we started do, we started working with three, and we wound up working with two. Uh, the third thing that's going on now is that there's a shortage of uh, work crews. And so to hedge against the possibility that we might not have adequate work crews if we had a sole contract with one contractor, we're, it, we're going to have contracts with multiple contractors. And what we're proposing now is the actually the second contractor. There'll be additional contractors downstream, but this is uh, this is the next one. The first one was Eustace. This one is First Light. So the, the um, motion is this. Whereas the governing board awarded construction contractors to more than one contractor, which included First Light Fiber Inc. on 12 July 2022, subject to successful negotiations, and whereas the governing board authorized the executive committee to determine that the negotiations had been successful and that it was authorized to approve the contract terms, and whereas the, whereas the master services agreement has been reviewed by an outside attorney as required, Whereas on 9 November 2022, the Executive Committee found that CV Fiber First Light negotiations has been successful and it approves and recommends the CV Fiber First Light Master Services Agreement to the Governing Board for its approval. It has moved the Governing Board approves the CV Fiber First Light Master Services Agreement and authorizes its, its execution by the Governing Board Chair. Second. Seconded by Jeremy Matt. Is there any additional discussion to be had concerning this issue? The motion on the table. Hearing none, are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? Again, hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. This is uh, extremely important. We, uh, we are lining up everything that needs to be lined up to get fiber built in central Vermont. Uh, let's move on to some more regular business then. The uh, treasurer's report, Laura Beth, Lori Beth, are you are you able to uh, to to do this with your internet connection? Is Lori Beth with us still? I do, a, I do okay. see her, but she's still muted. Is it possible you you're on mute, now? Lori Beth? I, I yes. am off mute now. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Um, I had sent the treasurer's report out, and it gave um, what had been paid last month, which was quite a few things. There was nothing that had to be authorized by um, the executive board, but the, or any of the other boards, but there was a, quite a bit 
paid out. There was uh, $919,000, uh, $22.95 paid out. And we made a deposit of $333,000 in. Um, that's the only deposit that has come in this month, the only two. Um, and they were at the same time. One of them was the, I think the additional that was supposed to come from Orange or was, no, one of them was from Orange. The other one is from um, Moortown, Montpelier, or East Montpelier and Middlesex. Are there additional questions for Lori Beth? All right, hearing none, thank you. Ray, is there anything that, that you would like to discuss as the chair of the finance committee? Um, let's, no, I don't think so, thank you. Okay, excellent. So at this time, even though uh, we've run through the list um, in, in, in advance of the time allotted, uh, we're gonna hold the budget public hearing for seven o'clock. So Jerry, I, can I, yes. Jerry, can I inter interject? Just one question. Um, sure. Uh, let me look at the um, at Lori's report. There is an item for the Vermont Communications Union District Association of and a, a payment of two hundred and twenty four thousand um, odd dollars. I'm. Can you explain that? I'm not sure what that what that payment was about. What that yeah, association. Go ahead, Janelle, yep. please. We did a mass purchase for fiber through Vicuda through NRTC. So okay. we got a better deal on fiber by ordering uh, fiber through Vicuda. So that's Vicuda. That's that that, that yeah. explains it. Thank you. Yeah, we have another one. We have another one coming up too. Uh, we we've been getting our fiber from Vicuda, so we'll have another two hundred plus thousand dollar invoice for the most recent fiber delivery in the coming month. Right. Got it. Thank you. And Go RD, I, I, inv I invite you to come down to Montpelier, and 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 drive down Stonecutters Way. It's not Stonecutters yep. Way. It's Stone. Uh, Granite Shed. Granite Shed Road, drive down Granite Shed Road to the end and you will see reels of fiber. <laughs> so all we need to do is yep. get them strung on poles. Yeah, my son used to work down there. I'm familiar with the neighborhood. Okay. Thank You're you. Also Got it. Lots of orange conduit. So Janiel, then would you please move into the executive director report and let us know what's been happening with make ready permits and materials? Yeah, we got our first um, easement through Green Mountain Power, yay. Um, we just got noticed that there were a few final changes to the, um, the lease for the West site and Moortown and Callis, well, first Callis. Um, so we're finalizing that. Um, our, we had a warehouse kidding meeting with Wild Blue Yonder, Eustis and NRTC today. And identified that some of the bulk and other hardware hadn't been ar hadn't arrived. So I reached out to KGP Co. and asked them to release some of those that they were um, that they were waiting uh, waiting to release until they had it all. I said just send it as it comes. Um, so we're getting a lot of materials in. Um, our warehouse is looking very full. Um, and for per for for permits, we've received 11 Washington Electric co-op licenses. More are expected. We're continuing with ride outs. Um, this is about 75 miles of pole licenses. That's partly the backbone and partly um, just outside the backbone as well. So um, it will be strategic how we issue those statements of work and start on the construction, depending on how many licenses we have when, when we push go. So that's the, that's the overview of permits, easements, and uh, where we are with, with construction materials. Could you um, give a little bit of a description of the kidding 
process? That's a little bit of a of a unique thing. Could you could you describe that for folks? Yeah. So there's a there's a bill of materials that's developed by our design team and construction manager NRTC. That is that is organized by distribution area. And when we have the green light on a distribution area or enough of a distribution area that it makes sense to get the team, the, the, the construction team out and building, we'll issue a, a statement of work notice to proceed. They will go to the warehouse. They will have received from NRTC a copy of that, that kidding list that is to be used for that particular scope of work or distribution area for building out that specific uh, scope. Um, Justin and his team at Wild Blue Yonder will get together in a special corner of the warehouse, a kidding package, and that is all of the materials that are needed for that scope of work or distribution area. Then they will take all of that material and place it on the truck and go out into the field. Now they do this once a week and maybe even every other week, uh, they'll have a crew going out into the field and hanging fiber or laying down the platform and templates for the cabinet sites and doing their construction work. So they, they'll come in the beginning of the week, pick it up, build it out all week, and then return to the warehouse at the end of the week with any excess. And if they're missing or short a bolt or uh, something, they will come back to the warehouse and ask to fill the gaps. And David, did you want to provide context here too? I noticed you had your hand up and you were at the meeting with us today. Well, I wanted, to, I wanted just to make sure that Michael and, and Jane are aware of the issues we've been having with Hydric Electric. And um, we think we have a little go ahead that they're going to come out with us very shortly, but it's been a very slow uh, slog to work with what Hardwick, and it's not just Hardwick, it's Hardwick owns their poles with consolidated communications. So even if Hardwick was slow, consolidated was even slower. But I think yeah. we're moving through that. But it could hold up the construction in the Woodbury area until we get that all, you know, approved by that, getting those licenses. And um, yeah. the other thing that came from the kidding in the construction, I just want to make sure everybody, because we we don't always meet with every, every town. Um, I think Chuck raised at the at the executive committee meeting, we already got a comment from the newsletter they're not in front porch forum about wait a minute you're hiring eustace aren't they is the folks that killed the cows well it was eustace's subcontractor who's who left the stainless steel wire in the field i just want to say our, we are hot we have hired uh nrtc to be our construction manager and they are holding Eustace and First Light's feet to the fire to make sure everything is done according to specification and, and best practices. So I just want to make sure everybody is aware of all the little safeguards we're trying to put into what we're doing. And I have to say, it's pretty complicated. Yeah, and Eustace is really responsible too and responsive. And it was their sub that, that made this ter terrible mistake. And uh, even the Agency of Natural Resources has issued a memorandum to broadband specifically identifying the importance of cleanup. Um, this is this is something that Eustace and all of the people we work with are very aware of, um, the importance of cleaning up. Um, so, yeah, it's, it is absolutely something on everybody's radar. David, your hand is still up. Do you oh, have sorry. more that you no, want that, 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 No, is it blabbermouth? Sorry. No, 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 no. That's that. That's okay. Is is there a additional discussion about uh, the executive director's report here? I, I wonder if I could ask a question about Hardwick Electric. Um, you know, I'm I'm sorry that they're uh, kind of a frog in the wheel here, um, but uh, I know. Um, is it Karen Kotecki? Somebody has been communicating yes. with me yep. and other select board members about the bits of road um, that uh, cable will be implemented in Woodbury. And I know there was a question that I just found before the meeting, and I don't know if this is the proper place to do this. I can continue that dialogue with Karen. Um, yeah. But uh, there are a couple roads that have been designated that are class four roads that um, people don't really live on, so we're kind of scratching our heads about that. Uh, but I'll I'll continue that dialogue with um, 
with Karen. Karen, and if there's anything that Woodbury can do to um, goad Hardwick Electric, you know, they, they're, they're often kind of dragging their feet on a lot of things. Um, well, they're pretty but, small. Uh, <laughs> they're very yeah, small. We are, yeah. We're asking a lot of the utilities. There's there's no question. Um, yeah. But any any and any help, Michael would be would, would be much appreciated. And please yeah. stay in touch. Stay in touch with Karen and and get in touch with Janiel or David. Yeah. You know, as, because as, as like, needed to move things. Yeah, the class four. I'd like to talk to Karen is leading all our permitting stuff, but NRTC did the design, so they may mm -hmm. have to be called into the issue that you flagged. That's I'm okay, glad so that you caught I'll, that. I'll um I'll continue talking with Kara. Super. About that. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we we have to follow the polls where they are, of course. Um, right. But 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 we should if look. There's into nobody it. there. <laughs> well, yeah. there's one of the roads has no polls at all, so that's that's. Um, but we'll okay. we'll figure that out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there additional discussion on the director's report? So moving on, I'd like to I'd like to move into the construction schedule, uh, construction schedule discussion here. There's no there's no action to be taken. It's just a matter of of updating, and it's it's kind of a continuation of uh, of, of Janiel's report. Uh, Janiel, can you give a uh, a, a little bit of a, an update on how things are moving and what's what's between us and actual construction? Yeah, well, we did get our first two licenses or approvals on a design, final approvals on design from VCBV, from the Vermont um, Communications Broadband Board. Uh, that was independently looked at through their their consulting agency, and they're reviewing additional uh, distribution areas for us, but the first two already came out as approved. What that means is it's essentially like a state building permit that gives approval for the design. Um, as long as we have green lights with material construction and permits, uh, licenses, um, we can go ahead and construct. So CLO1 and CLO2 have received formal approvals. And so let me ask you, when, when does Eustis plan on going into the field? We have scopes of work now that they are reviewing. Yeah, so it is right. So um, when we get our scopes of work signed um, and executed, I'll issue a notice to proceed. And that notice to proceed can be go in the field now or it can be go in the field within one week. It, it, it has to um, state a, a date certain to, come, to start. But I will tell you they're already in the field. I mean, looking, doing some pre-construction analysis. We met with them today. We met with them two weeks ago. They've been in cl very close communication with um, NRTC and with Wild Blue Yonder. Uh, they they have a local construction manager on site who's going to be uh, watching over the the troops in the field or the the crews in the field. Um, and so they they already have started the process of getting ready to go. Thank you. That's 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 very helpful. Uh, are there any any questions? Go ahead, David. I see your hand. Your real hand at, is up. At, at the meeting this morning, they are going to need to find a staging site so they can store their trailers or then whatever those big big trucks and uh, to keep materials ready to go for themselves. That they, after they get it from our warehouse. So if anybody knows of a graveled field someplace in central Vermont that makes it easy for them to. The store of the stuff they're interested in leasing it somewhere as close as possible to like say the callus um or east Mont Sub, Billy, right? east Mont yeah yeah somewhere close as possible to where they'll be constructing thank you that that, that would that would be great if somebody could find of such a place uh, ray go ahead please so in, in the interest of stretching this even further so we can get to seven o'clock <laughs> uh, for, the, for, the, for the budget public hearing and, guilty and as provide, charged hopefully to provide some additional information you may remember that the board actually approved uh, the uh, statements of work for eustace and there were four of them 
the first one had to do with the Calus OLT district, which is, uh, uh, and there, there are three district distribution areas there, CLO one, two, and three. And uh, so that's the that's the strand and, and lash uh, 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 strand and fiber uh, business. The other two, the other three had to do with the where the OLT is actually going to be placed physically, where the cabinets are going to be, and where the lights going to come in from First Light or Velco or some other source um, being managed by uh, uh, Waitsfield Telecom. So there's a there's a place in Callis and that's a WEC substation, and there's there are components that are required for that, one of which is some sort of a, a kit uh, that they have to uh, actually put on the ground and they pour and they and they then they add the cabinets then they add the electronics and then they put the light in, et cetera, et cetera. The materials for that are still not here. Um, I don't think we even have the kits yet. Do we, Janelle, for the uh, for the platforms? No, we so don't have yeah, we don't have the kits. We don't yet have the cabinets and we don't yet have um, uh, any electronics. The, those are uh, they've been promised to us, so we'll we'll see when they arrive. But hopefully, they'll arrive uh, by before the end of the year. Uh, so the the first one is in Callis. Uh, the other one, there's one in Marshfield um, that we we mentioned. It was it was part of the uh, motion. Uh, that same uh, uh, kind of configuration. In fact, both Marshfield and Callis have two uh, calyx. Two, uh, 2,000 and a 1,000 because there's so much um, distribution area. And then the then the SOW4 had to do with Middlesex. And so the installing a, a platform in Middlesex. Now, so notices to, notices to proceed for each one of those, really, uh, you can give a notice to proceed today. Well, not yet today because we don't have all the contracts signed. But you know what? They can't do anything until the materials and stuff are there, right? So those notices to proceed are going to be downstream at some point in time as, as things become available. We're hopeful that what they can do is do a lot of the underground work. Uh, Michael and, and others that, that you know, that uh, that uh, Karen Gutecki and others are identifying those things so that they can do the underground work before stuff freezes, right? And um, uh, as well as maybe some fiber, some strand, putting up strands, some lash, they're going to they'll be doing some tree trimming, they'll be doing some make ready, uh, not the power make ready, because that's what WEC and the other folks are doing, but they'll be doing the make ready in the communication space, that 12 inches we need for that strand and lash. Uh, and the, and the, the putting that stuff up, and as Janiel said, there's 63, 70 miles worth of already approved what I call green um, uh, pole licenses, and that's a stretch of about seven miles each. So we have about nine to ten of those to be done. Um, and they are going to jump from one green area to another green area to get that done until we get the whole area being green. We have pole license applica pole licenses for all of it. And and um, Hardwick, you know that Hardwick is Woodbury, right? So that and that's Callus So three, and so our ability to, you know, we can give a notice to proceed there, but they can't do anything until we have green. And so getting those, uh, getting those make, get, getting that make ready done, poles replaced as necessary, et cetera, uh, is important before the work gets done. So that's kind of the lay of the land at this point in time. Michael, you have a hand up. Yeah, um, Ray, I just wanted to ask you, because um, I uh, was part of a discussion with uh, um, a, a longtime worker at Hardwick Electric where um, he had mentioned that they're going to have to be putting in new poles for mm -hmm. um, in some areas for this fiber um, in Woodbury under their, you know, their jurisdiction. Um, do they does is CV Fiber paying them to put in those new poles? Okay, so, right. the so that's answer not is, sure answer okay. is yes. And, okay, and so that, <laughs> that's part so of that's our not cost. an issue where they have to pay for the poles. They're they're uh, getting it, it, it. could be in some instances if you know if the pole is already corroded or it's you know it's it's um, uh, if if they if the pole is corroded for example and, and they should have replaced it then that's mm -hmm. on them. If it's okay. something that uh, it's required by us because the pole is too short and we have to have 18 feet above the roadway, right? Uh, so they have to go from a 30 foot pole to a 50 foot pole, then th that's on us, right? Okay. So there are, there are and, and it's by the way, it's the same way with uh, uh, Green Mountain Power and WEC. Uh, and, uh, we're, and, we're and we, don't, we, we don't let the payment 
uh, interfere with the timing. So if, it, if there's something that needs to be negotiated or discussed or to, to be determined, we pay for it, we move on, and, and we'll, we'll continue to negotiate, but yeah, we won't you, wait. We're yeah, not going to hold everything up arguing over one poll. Yeah, you okay. may recall right. the board and the executive committee has approved expedited uh, payment processing for that particular thing. Somebody, what we do is we submit a 200 poll application. It could be less than that, but that's the max, 200 polls. Mm -hmm. They come back and tell us it's going to cost us this much money because they get the money up front. Yeah. And so uh, Janiel approves those, uh, authorizes the payment for them, and they get paid right away because we can't afford the delay on the other end. Now, right. that what they're giving us is an estimate of what the cost is going to be. And so it could be that, frankly, the cost is uh, more. And we won't know that until they've actually done the work. It, and it also could be that the cost is less, in which case we'll get a rebate. So we're, you know, <laughs> we're not yeah. optimistic about that part. Janiel, go ahead and I jump in. So here, and that is that the, the uh, requirements for the make ready are being checked. We've hired MBI, Mission Broadband, to do all the ride outs with us. So it's not like the utility company is just saying, hey, spend this. In order for me to approve the invoices, I'm checking with MBI on every one and saying, do these notes agree with the field? And he's going back for a uh, quick negotiation downward if necessary, if the things <clears throat> on the estimate don't agree with uh, what he saw in the field. Nine times out of 10, it agrees. Every once in a while, he'll say, oh, I think that we don't need five pole replacements. We only need three and we'll get a revision. Um, so, so while it is true that we're paying them and we'll, we'll true up later because it's just an estimate in the beginning, we do have the checks in place with our independent contractor to make sure that they are agreeing with what the utility company is initially estimating. Uh, allow me to stop the conversation here just for one minute. David, I'll, I'll go right yep. to you. We have 15 minutes before the the budget, public budget hearing. And during that time, we, there's one more item on this agenda. Yeah. And that's our subscription rates. Can we ha get jump to that discussion now and fill the next 15 minutes with that discussion and make sure that we are available for the public hearing at seven. Uh, David, your hand, go ahead, please. Now, I was just going to let you know, I mean, in terms of make ready, if Hardwick has a trouble getting poles or transformers, it could delay the work there too. So a lot of things in terms of supply affects things. That's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, Doc. Yeah, that's very true. Jeremy, Matt. Uh, so the only thing that pops into my head about the subscription rates is whether or not that's going to be an executive uh, session thing, in which case we would have to boot off Orca and uh, potentially other people uh, who might be interested well, in being around for that. That's why we save it. For, that's why we. I always save it for the end of going into executive session. Um, yeah. I mean, we could always just say, you know, bio break and be back in 15 minutes. <laughs> no one disconnect, but. Well, I, could try, you know, yeah. I apologize for, for scheduling this uh, so poorly, but we moved through things very quickly today. Uh, we can do some discussion of subscription rates, background information that, that we, uh, because a lot of work has gone into this and we just came out of executive, uh, came out of our executive committee meeting and talked about these uh, subscription rates, but David put his hand back up, so. Yeah, I just want to know why do these have to be an executive session? If we're going to announce them, we're going to announce them. We're not announcing the rates tonight, David. That's why. Are we going to do it at the webinar next Wednesday? Probably not. Wow. Okay, I disagree. Yeah, that's, I mean, actually, that's, that's that's a fair point. I mean, I, I could see it announcing, you know, our. Well, I, I mean, it would be good to discuss them ahead of time in case there is disagreement sure. so that, you know, we get that. Siobhan, your hand is up. Oh, I was just going to say, I thought Ray had prepared an interpretive dance to fill in the space between. 
<laughs> There's certainly a lot more we could talk about in terms of getting the, uh, the make ready and all the work that's involved with that in our progress and construction schedule, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we can also do a little of um, a contextual background for the subscription rates and uh, and then get to the I would I, the the budget the budget hearing is going to be like five minutes because and and you know unless I'm misreading the crowd and unless we have more people joining unless more people are joining us here there's uh, there's no public to have a meeting to discuss it, it, exactly so that but we but we have you know we're required to do it and um, so we've announced it and we'll do it and it'll take five to ten minutes. But um, uh, but perhaps in a few minutes now, leading up to that, we could talk about subscription rates if you'd like to. Yeah, okay, I, so. I, yeah. Let, I'd I'd like to lead that discussion off, and then we can we can uh, we can talk additionally about it. So, you know, we've been talking about our subscription rates for a long time, and we actually approved subscription rates a couple of months ago. And uh, between then and now, we started learning more information. And the folks on the executive committee have already heard me say this, but we thought it was our due diligence with the new information that we had to make sure that the subscription rates that had already been approved were, in fact, still appropriate. And we reached out. Uh, and had a number of folks work with us on bringing up the updating the information that we were <laughs> estimating with new estimates based on our make ready costs that we already have experienced based on the bids for construction that we had received that we had didn't have before uh, based on uh, prices for materials that we didn't have before. Uh, so in 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 pulling all of this together, we had an RTC rerun our financial model with this additional information. And in 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 doing all of that work, which took quite some time, I'm, I'm, I, I have to add, this was a, a kind of an additional task that wasn't on folks plate until we had asked them to do it. Uh, they found that our. The rates that we had approved were appropriate. They remained; they were still appropriate. That you know, some things went up, some things went down, some things didn't really change all that much, and that we were we were in a good space, in a good place with our subscription rates. Um, so that's that's the the out of executive session type discussion. And I think I, I'm going to pass it over to Ray because I, I know there's another part to this that he he would like to add that that uh, that he added also in the executive committee meeting. So you, you see me jumping That's in the residential, bit. right, Jerry? Jump in, jump in there. Residential, so, yes. Yeah, it, it was residential. You, you may recall, Linda, that we were working on the residential with regard to our, our ARPU, our average revenue per user. Right, so um, that's what, that was our target, and we had a target number that we had to reach to support our financial obligations, our our you know what our revenue had to meet our expenditures, right, as well as our, our projection for um, uh, debt financing, um, and because we're going to be getting some, we're going to be issuing some municipal bonds, um, probably in eighteen months, perhaps as early as eighteen months. There are. Um, what I would what I would what I would add to this conversation is this, which makes it uh, the the variability makes it uh, difficult, and that is this: we have we have ARPA funding um, to the tune of about twenty three million dollars. That's going to take us so far, um, and bead money, which is the IIJA um, infrastructure uh, investment in Jobs Act, I guess it was. Um, Every state got $100 million at minimum, and there might be some additional money uh, also. So we had we had counted on another $9.3 million out of that bead money, but it could be higher. The problem is that the bead money is not going to hit until sometime in 24, and it could be June, it could be August. We don't know when that bead money is going to hit, so there could be a gap. 
between our ARPA money and our and our B money. And of course, what we don't want to happen is we don't want um, we don't want to be in a position where we need materials, where the queue for materials, the lead time for materials, is only going to get longer because of the billions of dollars the feds have pumped out throughout the states, right? And so everyone's going to be ordering the exact same things that we're ordering. So the lead times are going to go up, the costs are going to go up, and what we're going to do is uh, we want to order our materials and get materials ahead of that curve. Um, but, but the other problem is that we lose our construction crews, right? If, if, we, if our work slows down or stops, we're going to lose crews, and those crews may not come back. Yeah, they, these are um, these are nomads. OK, <laughs> they go to where the dollars are. And if the dollars aren't here, they're going someplace else and they may not come back. So um, we don't want to we don't want to stop and go. Uh, we want nonstop construction. And so we need to fill this gap or find a way to fill this gap. So we're looking at, at some several alternatives uh, to do that. So that's a, but that's kind of the variability that it's built into the financial plan. You know, uh, how much money do you have? When are you going to uh, get loans? Uh, what are the what are the payments for that going to be? And you can imagine for municipal bonds, you know, where not too late. In fact, in December, December of uh, 20, um, EC Fiber sold bonds at at four uh, percent, four and a half percent, somewhere in there, right? Uh, now those rates are going 5%, 6% because look at the interest rates, how they've gone up, right? So uh, that's a problem. Um, so we're, we, need to, we need to look at this whole plan. So the, 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 what, we were, what we were giving the NRTC and our financial plan was this kind of information as well as they've told us, oh, by the way, your mileage has increased. The mileage estimates that we used now we're getting the detailed design work back and the mileage has gone up. So now our expenses have gone up. You can use a round number like $50,000 a mile as a round number. And you're not gonna be that far off. You're not gonna be that far off. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna be 20% off. 10%, uh, you know, but 50, use $50,000 a mile. And we just went from a hundred, we just went from a thousand miles to 1200 miles. So 50, 50 times 1,200 miles is $60 million. So a project that was going to cost, you know, we thought around 50 or something like that, um, is 55, 58, $60 million. So, um, but we built, we worked with uh, with NRTC, with Kevin and Keith and stuff on the financial plan. Um, there's a comfort level that we've achieved with regard to that. Uh, there are some possible solutions. We're going to look at uh, reconnect USD loans, which uh, now are at two percent. They have loans at two. Let me tell you, that's free money, right, RD? That's free money. Two percent. I'd love to get a two percent loan. Um, yeah, so, and and the other thing about that is you only make interest payments the, like the first three years. So you defer that. Plus, it's the length of the life of the asset. So we're talking about 20 years, 30 years. That kind of flattens out the uh, the payment requirements, right? The debt service on the on the um, subscription rates, the impact on the subscription rates, which are huge for EC Fiber. $65 million they have in outstanding debt, and it amounts to like 39 percent of their um, of their subscription fees. 39 percent, and so that's why their subscription rates are are high. They have no choice. Uh, they envy us the fact that we're going to get um, 35 to possibly 50 million dollars, possibly, in uh, in grant funds. So we'll see where we're at, and we have four minutes until a public hearing. I hope that sobered you up a little bit. <laughs> it sobered me up. <laughs> R.D., you have any questions? I know you see you laughing there. You know, you, so tell what's your budget? What's your budget there? You're on mute. What's your budget in your town? It was a great interpretive dance, Ray. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and Healy and, and others are tired of hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's 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 kind of where we're at. And so the the subscription rate uh, business, I I feel comfortable with where that's at. Uh, we had a conversation with um, with NRTC today, and Janiel was on the call. 
and we're going to we're going to be doing live updates to the financial plan. So as as the information becomes available, as we cut, you know, because we estimated something like sixty five hundred dollars a mile for make ready, right? And so pole replacements, the actual tree trimming, the hold, you know, moving the stuff in the electrical space and blah, 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 uh, $6,500 a mile. Well, we've had pole application, what, we've had one stretch of pole application, what, for, uh, do you need $100,000 for, for I, uh, green I power? Enough, on that insanity one, uh, that was $40 a mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 $40 a mile, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, uh, yeah, outrageous. See, so you know, obviously we've got a thousand miles to go. Um, but what we're going to do is that we're going to take the information that we're getting because the next load of materials that we're going to be ordering, which will be about two million dollars plus or minus, in uh, probably by the before the before the end of the year, we'll order another two million dollars of material so that we can we can hoard it, we can bank it, we'll have it in the warehouse. So if there's a gap that we don't have any money. Uh, we're not uh, we're not left out of the queue, right? Because we can't even order then. We need to have stuff in, in the warehouse so we can kick back up again, because the lead time is only going to get larger. And maybe that'll sort itself out in 2025 or something. But it's going to take several years to shake out. So that's where Ray, we're at. There's and one there, there's one thing that you didn't mention that when I handed this off to you, I thought was where you were going to go, and that is no, why. Sir. Why are we bringing why are we bringing subscription fees back to the governing board? And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to address that one. And, and that and that is this. So the governing board back on 9 August is, is going to be part of the motion. And you actually authorize the executive committee to uh, adopt um, subscription rates. You authorize them to do that. OK, and so the, the, the executive committee could do that. But. Um, Tom Fisher's comment at the end um, having to do with, uh, you know what, this is something the governing board need, should really should really approve. You know, they should understand it, uh, why that is, because people in the district are going to ask us, how come your, your rate is N dollars? And you need to understand, you know, why the rates are that high. And I think I gave you some background on why that is. But, um, and, and so we're gonna, we'll go through what the rates are. Um, uh, and and so what what's going to happen at this point? What I'm hoping will happen is that you'll 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 ratify what the executive committee has approved. Okay, we we the executive committee has approved rates, and they've asked the governing board to ratify it. Ratify it? Don't ratify it. But th this is um, this is what the the rates are. Um, expenses are no, going nowhere but up. And I'd like to note that it is seven o'clock and we are here to entertain any public discussion on our budget for 2023. Uh, is there any public discussion on our budget, which has been sent to the towns for their review? Ray? Yeah, I, so I see RD with his hand up, so I'll, I'll, I'll defer to him, but I wanted to provide some context. This is a public hearing. And I wanted to kind of go through some process stuff, um, at least flash the budget on the screen, you know, the, yes. go through go through a few motions with that. But I already has his hand up and I'd love to hear. I just, Ray, I just, just as a procedural matter, do we need to adjourn our regular meeting and convene a public hearing? What, what I would say to you is that uh, uh, the statute says that uh, the the a public hearing will be had, held at the regular meeting in November. Okay. And so thank you. Then we go, I, would, uh, I would say no. So let me let me give you some background you. on the process here. Thank you. So on 11 October, uh, this board approved the budget. Uh, approval is an adoption of the budget. You approved a budget, okay? And the and that budget was subsequently sent to all of the legislative bodies of the members of of uh, CB Fiber. For them to review and to provide comment either um, in the interim or at this particular public hearing. Uh, second, this this public hearing tonight is an, is an opportunity for people to offer comments and ask questions about the approved budget. At, a, at the regular December board meeting, the board actually adopts the budget. OK, that is our budget for 2023. Uh, having said that, what I would tell you is that 
uh, the board has the authority to change the budget. And you probably remember for the, over the course of this last year, we have changed the budget a bit. We have added light items and, and we've moved money around, et cetera, et cetera. We're authorized to do that. So we're, I can tell you that we are absolutely going to do that. And the reason I'm doing all this type talking is that I'm the chair of the finance committee. So if, if anybody is on the call that didn't know that, so um, I, that's, that's it. So that's, that is the, that is the, uh, the, uh, the process that we're following. I'm just going to share my screen here, just so that we can we can uh, take a look at uh, here's 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 the budget, and um, for 2023 in the forecast, our expectations, for example, is that we're going to get about 24 and a half million dollars in terms of uh, grants, um, uh, and and so town opera funds. We already have 833 thousand dollars committed, and that is just from the towns itself. It doesn't include the matching. And so um, we've now since recently learned that the, 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 the matching funds is coming from a different, is going to come from a different pot of money. So my expectation is when we get to adopt a budget, that's gonna double, that number will, that number will double. Uh, we have pre-construction funds that are being carried over, construction funds of 17.3, and we had a materials grant for six million dollars, and uh, uh, we're we're going to spend we're going to spend a whole bunch in uh, in 2023. Um, so our total income is like 25 million dollars. Notice that it it assumes that we're going to get 470 thousand dollars in subscriptions, subscription revenue, which assumes almost 1200, um, 1200 subscribers. And so that is kind of like the best case scenario. If we had everything green and we have these two construction contractors uh, working at the rates that they can work like 40 miles a month, we can get a lot accomplished. Provided we don't run out of money, right? We don't, we don't run a, the higher cost and the, and if we have a, if we have a significant in, increase, for example, in, um, in uh, uh, people subscribing, every one of those drops is a, like a fifteen hundred dollar charge, right? It's going to so it, it, if we had a whole bunch of people subscribing, that money that is used being used for drops is not being used for construction, and so we might uh, stop construction may end a little bit earlier than than, uh, than and so this is an optimistic number. So we and I would tell you in the in the front end of this is that is this going to happen? Is this exactly good? No, it's not. By the year 2025, we'll have a better understanding of, of what's happening. All of the elements of all of these things. We don't have that. We don't have that now. A lot of the stuff is variables, just like talk about it earlier. Okay, so this is broken down into four into four expense parts. One is administration, pre-construction, construction, and operation. So administration is you know, here's the the total of that is about seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. This has to do with um, uh, costs for staffing, advertising, audits, for example, forty thousand dollars. We're going to have our first audit this year. We're going to audit uh, uh, um, 2022, and that audit we need that audit before we can even apply for this recon reconnect grant that I mentioned earlier for that possible two or three percent grant, whatever that's going to be. Hopefully they'll they'll still have the program. Uh, we have some advertising involved. Um, we have <clears throat> we have something like we've had something like officer stipends. Well, we we have been paying our treasurer a stipend of a thousand dollars a month. Uh, new for this discussion is a stipend for the board, board chair. And we have uh, previously had uh, stipends for the clerk, which the clerk refused. Uh, but the, that number has been increased and is also um, uh, put in here. Does approval of the budget approve these particular expenditures? And the short answer is no. Okay, the, those will come up for individual approval when not not the adoption. Maybe the adoption is a separate line item, but um, approving it now uh, doesn't doesn't do that. Uh, we have increased insurance requirements, licensing, et cetera, et cetera. And so $750,000 for that. Our pre-construction costs, these are the these are the make-ready design costs that we were talking about earlier. Uh, materials, we move materials down here into the construction area because that's really more appropriate because that'll eventually go away, right? Those warehouse stuff will eventually go away. Um, 
uh, construction, project management. It, you know, if, if you've done project management on any other project, you, these costs are typically 10 to 15% of the cost of a project. So they're not insignificant. Uh, labor, $14 million or so. Materials, uh, another $3 million. I, not only are we going to buy materials in this year, we will buy materials again Q1 uh, uh, next year because we can't afford not to if we're, if we're going to run out of if we're going to run out of uh, money, right? And then we have uh, operations, and and operations will be with us forever. Construction eventually was going to uh, stop, but operations will go on forever. And uh, we're anticipating almost three million dollars in um, in operations. And look at some of some of the stuff that is in this budget, the things that were gleaned from EC Fiber's budget and other people's budgets. For example, bank and credit card fees. That's a cost, right? Bad debt is a cost. Those are things that perhaps you hadn't thought about, but they're definitely parts. They're definitely uh, 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 cost. The affordability fund. Here we're, we're talking about the possibility of some sort of relationship with equal access to broadband or some other uh, uh, method by which we're going to help in the um, in identifying, qualifying, and making sure that people who can't afford it uh, and, and qualify into the programs can get that affordability, the affordability connectivity program, and that is uh, thirty dollars a month. We have to do we have to do some things in order to qualify ourselves for that particular program, right? Uh, internet installation. This is the this is the bit having to do with uh, doing drops. Uh, reserve fund. Uh, we don't have a net, right? Anything any difference between total expenses and total income uh, goes into our reserve fund. Um, there is no net uh, surplus or anything. Do, do we need a do we need reserves? We have to demonstrate when we go to the uh, go to the bond market that you know we're 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 sustainable, right? We're profitable. We're a nonprofit, but we we can cover our bonds because the coverage is like 1.25. So if you borrow a million dollars, you have to and you're paying uh, you know ten thousand dollars a month, you have to actually show that you're bringing in twelve thousand five hundred dollars a month, right? So you have to have that 1.25 coverage. So this is a kind of a quick overview um, uh, for the for the public comments, questions. And um, if there aren't any, we can end our public hearing. Not that I'm pushing for that, <clears throat> but I'm happy to talk to anybody individually offline, any of the members of the board or uh, be happy to talk to you folks separately if you'd like. Are there any any questions? Any questions from the public? Any discussion input from the public? I hear none. Thank you, Ray. That was uh, a very good walk but, but through I our I'd budget. Move, I guess I'd move to end the public hearing. Second. Oop, I moved to oh, end the second, public hearing. Got a second from Jeremy. Any opposed? Well, we well, we never had a motion to open it. Well, it was in the agenda. Yes, but we never had a motion. Do we need a motion to close it? Let, let's say we don't. Okay. Let's let's move on to the next item I'm of happy. business then. Second. <laughs> hey, I already second Siobhan. You yeah. can't do that. So, heard, heard the word move. <laughs> and, it, and it was like the awake word for a lecture or something. You know, it's like. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, with, 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 with that done, we can, we can, Ray, you can take this down from the, uh, from the screen. Thank you. The, la the last item on the agenda before we adjourn is the discussion of our subscription rates. Uh, I do believe that we've done as much discussion as we possibly can without being in uh, executive session. So we, we, we do need to show some numbers in executive session. Uh, so is there- I have a motion uh, for the going executive session. What a good idea. Yeah. Um, are, we, are we at the tipping point? God, are we at the tipping? Yeah. Is, is there is there any other discussion to be had on the subscription rates outside of an executive session? 
I hear none. Yeah, we can we can possibly have it on the other on the other end. But uh, move the pursuant to one VSA um, section three thirteen alpha one alpha. We find that premature public knowledge of our discussions relating to the CV fiber subscription rate plan would put CV fiber at a competitive disadvantage. Second. Siobhan. Come on, I what happened? by Jeremy. <laughs> I want oh, Jeremy yeah. to feel good about himself. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Is there any discussion of the motion? Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? All right, the motion passes. There's a separate motion now to actually go into executive session. This is a two-part, two-parter, I'm sorry. Move that we enter executive session to discuss the CV fiber subscription rate plan pursuant to 1 VSA Alpha Section 313 Alpha 3 and invite CV fiber staff, treasurer, delegates, alternates, committee vice chairs, and, okay, who am I leaving out? The cat. Anybody? Uh, the, the cat. cat. <laughs> uh, if I'm not, if I don't hear anybody that I haven't covered here, just um, then we can. And whose information is needed uh, at, according to one VSA Alpha Section three thirteen Bravo. Siobhan? Second. <laughs> RD. <laughs> RD second. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That my trigger finger went off, Siobhan. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's fine. I had forgotten I'd muted myself. <laughs> Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Give me a moment, please, while I stop the recording. And I guess we ask our friends at Orca to please stop the recording. Um, well, I think we need to boot them. And also just wanted to point out for the minutes that it is 7.14 p.m. <laughs>